Welcome to Electron Online. Our next example deals with the hyperbolic cosine. And of course, we should remember that the hyperbolic cosine can be written as e to the x plus e to the minus x divided by 2. Remember the hyperbolic sine. The only difference would be that this becomes a negative right there. All right. So if we're going to define our function as a hyperbolic cosine, we could then say that y equals that, or the f of x equals that. So f of x is equal to e to the x plus e to the minus x divided by 2. Now we take the derivative of that because we're trying to find the arc length of the on the interval of the curve from 1 to the square root of 2. So we take the derivative, f prime of x, and so the derivative of e to the x is simply e to the x. The derivative of e to the minus x will be minus e to the minus x, and we still have a divided by 2. So now we see that the derivative of the cos hyperbolic cosine is a hyperbolic sine. Now we have to square that, so f prime of x, <coughs> excuse me, quantity squared, is equal to, well, one half squared will give us one fourth times, we have e to the 2x, now e to the x times e to the minus x would be e to the zero, which is one, it'd be negative one, because we have negative here, and then multiply times two, that would be minus two, and then we have plus e to the minus 2x. So now we have the derivative of that function squared. Now we can plug that into our general equation or general uh, form of the integral to find the arc length. So we now say that the arc length is equal to the integral from a to b, which would be from 1 to the square root of 2, of the square root of 1 plus 1 quarter times e to the 2x minus 2 plus e to the minus 2x times dx. And again, at this time, we're usually going to push the panic button saying, well, how in the world are we going to integrate that? But remember what I said earlier is that most of the examples when we're looking for arc length are the examples that we can actually integrate. If there's even some simple functions that you think, oh, that should be easy, and there you're going to find some of the integrals with arc length are very difficult to work. So here, this is actually not bad because notice what we can do. We multiply the one fourth, well, actually, let's see here. What would be the thing to do? Um, hmm, hmm. Because what we want to do here is we want to combine this. So yes, let's multiply this through. So we have one fourth, so we get L is equal to the integral from one to the square root of two uh, times the square root of one plus one quarter e to the two x minus a half, and that would be plus a quarter e to the minus two x. And there's a reason why we're doing that, you'll see in a moment, times dx, because now we can add the 1 to the negative 1 half, that becomes a plus 1 half. So now we have L is equal to the integral from 1 to the square root of 2 of the square root of 1 quarter e to the 2x plus 1 half plus 1 quarter e to the minus 2x times dx. And now notice we can factor out a quarter. So L is equal to the integral from 1 to the square root of 2 times the square root of 1 quarter times e to the 2x. Uh, let's see here, that becomes plus 2 plus e to the minus 2x times dx. And the reason why we did that is because we can now take the, uh, we can write this as a binomial squared. Notice here we had the negative, there we had the positive, Notice that this was simply the square of this quantity right there. So now we can do the reverse. We can also take out the one quarter. So we have L is equal to one half times uh, the integral from one to the square root of two of. Now notice, when I write this as a binomial squared, this becomes e to the, uh, e to the x plus e to the minus x quantity squared. Notice if you were to square that, you get the same thing as you do over here. We can't forget the dx, like that. And then, of course, the square root undoes the square. And so we end up with 1 half times the integral from 1 to the square root of 2. That's a terrible integral sign. Let me try that again. Oop, oop, oop. There we go. There, that's a little bit better. Uh, so now we end up with e to the x 
plus e to the minus x quantity times dx. And now, of course, that is a whole lot easier to integrate. Okay, coming up here, now we're going to integrate that. So we have 1 half times the quantity e to the x, because the integral of e to the x is e to the x, and the integral of e to the minus x would be minus e to the minus x, and that's evaluated from 1 to the square root of 2. Now we plug in the, the evaluation, so that's the length, the arc length, so L is equal to 1 half times, plug in the upper limit, e to the square root of 2 minus e to the minus square root of 2, plug in the lower limit, you get minus e to the first power, minus e to the minus uh, first power, like that. Okay, um, hmm, I guess we can simplify it just a little bit, so if L is equal to one half times e to the square root of two minus e to the minus square root of two, and that would be uh, e to the one minus e to the minus one, so that would be minus e minus times minus would be plus 1 over e, like this. Oop, I guess I don't need a bracket, it should be parentheses. Stay consistent. And, uh, let's see here. Hmm, I guess that's about as simple as we can get it. I can get my calculator out and calculate the length, uh, but that would be, I think, the simplest answer we can get. All right, and so that's it. That would be the arc length of that hyperbolic function, and that's how it's done. So what if you can still simplify any more of it? Um, we could put the minus square root 2 on the bottom. Yeah, we could put that on the bottom. And then make it on the common denominator. Um, well, let's try it. Let's see what we can do with it. Yeah, why don't we try it? Okay, so we have 1 half. Uh, so we have, this would be e to the square root of 2 minus 1 over e to the square root of 2 uh, minus e and uh, plus 1 over e, like that, right? Yeah, we could try that. So this is equal to 1 half times, so we have e to the square root of 2 times e to the square root of 2 divided by uh, e to the square root of 2 minus, that would be e, no, that's already 1, so we're good there. That would be minus 1, uh, minus, here we have e to the square root of 2 plus 1. So we have to add exponents. And then here we have um, plus e, so we have to, um, hmm. Yeah, yeah, let's try that. That might be good. Let's try it again. So let's cut this out. So two different fractions. Let's see what we can do. Good insight. All right. So we have this equal to one half times. So here we have um, e to the square root of two uh, plus Oh, let's see here. <laughs> so e to the square root of 2 times e to the square root of 2, that's better to write it like this. Uh, the e to the square root of 2, and that would be minus 1. And then here, that would be um, plus e times e divided by e plus 1. Uh, yes, I need to keep that. There's a negative up here. Yeah, we'll see. So here, hmm? yeah. so in this case, so we have this equal to one half times e two times the square root of two minus one over e to the square root of two. And then here we could take the negative out, so it would be negative. Plus, 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 plus one minus e squared. Yeah, yep. Plus one minus e squared over e. Is that better? 
Not really. <laughs> I think we're stuck with kind of a messy answer, but that's, uh, I think, the best we can do. All right, yeah, there it is. Pick, pick the one you prefer. 